They say a person's home is their castle. Well, if that's the case, then where is your action figure collection's home? Technically, it is also within that same home that you live in, but sometimes it is an actual castle with a giant skull face and a trap door. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the 10 best action figure playsets. This is the 10 best action figure playsets, but we did something a little different with this than with our previous lists. In the past, we have reached out to the collecting community via our Twitter and our Patreon to collect data to get votes from you to really get a good indicator of what everyone thinks should be ranked on lists like these. We did exactly that a few weeks ago. Producer Greg compiled all the stats as usual, but this time I asked him to keep the results a secret from me until we were live on the show, which is right now. Before we started shooting, I wrote down what I think the 10 best playsets are to see just how well I know this community and the totality of playsets over the years. Let's get to it. At number 10, you, the Toy Galaxy voters, said 1978 Kenner Star Wars Death Star Space Station. Like most playsets, it's a buffet, a sampler of something that couldn't possibly exist. In scale, it would just be too big. But you do get a lot of tasty little vignettes that allow you to recreate some of the iconic moments in the film, including a rope for Luke and Leia to swing across the cavern when the bridge is blown out, the controls for the shield for Obi-Wan to shut down, an elevator, and a trap door that leads directly to a trash compactor complete with foam trash and a tiny Dianoga monster figure. Tough to find one complete today since the outer panels were all made out of cardboard. My vote for the 10 spot was... The couch. <laughs> I may have misunderstood the point of this list. At number nine, you picked 1986 Mattel Masters of the Universe Eternia, one of the most expansive real estate hogging playsets in existence. It was comprised of three separate towers representing Castle Grayskull, Snake Mountain, and a giant central tower all connected by a suspended monorail track, a truly mind-blowing feat of engineering. This ain't no regular train set. The Grey Skull Tower features a prison with articulated portcullis. The Snake Mountain Tower features a giant telescoping snake head tethered by real chains. The Central Tower features a lion's head design with mouth drawbridge and all kinds of crazy details sculpted into the moat around it. It's enormous. It's a spectacle. It's nearly impossible to find complete in 2018, and if you do, it's gonna cost you. At number nine, I had kitchen table, but it could be any table, dining room, a uh, small table, anywhere, even outside, a picnic table, perhaps. At number eight, you voted for 1990 Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Technodrome, the giant double-decker mobile fortress. It's like Epcot Center on tank treads. It's got a giant eyeball periscope, lasers, a turtle mutation chamber, and shackles. It has a trapdoor to a jail, one of the playset standards, and it even has a connector port leading out of the jail cell to attach the turtle's sewer lair playset. We actually did a review of this one not too long ago. Very funny stuff. Check that out. For uh, number eight, I put... Uh, grandma's bookshelves, but it could be any bookshelves. My grandparents happened to have shelves that were really tall and ran the whole length of the hallway, had a lot of shelves. Uh, I guess any set of shelves would work now that I think about it. I don't, I didn't know we were doing branded play sets. At number seven, you voted for 1983 Hasbro G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center, a classic playset with parking for a Mobat tank, a vamp Jeep, and a repositionable helicopter landing pad. There's a main cannon gunner station, the Stars and Stripes weapon storage compartments, a full mission control op center with maps and action monitors, swivel chairs, and a proportionally huge detention area for Cobras, insubordinate Joes, or just a place to crash after a particularly raucous night out with shipwreck. And on top of all that, it's a rather large playset that could be easily broken down to components for easy storage. Uh, my number seven was the floor. The carpet was the beach and the floor was the ocean. Should I keep doing these? Number six was a tie vote between 1989 Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sewer playset and the modern update 2012 Playmates Secret Sewer playset. The original was a bold attempt not only to replicate the living area the Turtles had established below the city streets in the sewers, but also the city streets themselves. Sidewalks, wooden fence, telephone poles with power lines. 
It has a fire hydrant that hid its true function as a security periscope and a battle recovery bed with vanity mirror, splinters meditation mat, an elevator to the surface, and of course, as previously mentioned, a tube that allowed it to attach to the Technodrome jail. The 2012 secret sewer layer playset basically did all of that times 10. 40 inches tall, it had a city street diorama area that was even more detailed with a dumpster. It also featured a zip line and a tiny little makeshift shredder training dummy. All kinds of pipes and tunnels to immerse your imagination in that sewer environment. Yay, sewers. And uh, at number six, I had uh, dirt. <laughs> Uh, dirt could also be sand, sand could be quicksand, and that dirt could be anywhere. A park, backyard, the sand could be at the beach. There's all kinds of dirt and sand all over the place. This is a good one. Number five is 1986 Hasbro G.I. Joe Cobra Terror Drome, another vintage playset that we previously reviewed on this channel. Check out that video if you haven't already. The Terradrome's main attraction was the sheer size of the thing, as big as two and a half sacks of potatoes all day, four to five easy if they were those little ones. Its second most attractive feature was the fully retractable silo doors, which would open in sync with the elevator raising a super hot Cobra Firebat vehicle, one of the coolest looking Cobra vehicles, any vehicles, to even come out of the line. It has a jail, a refueling station, guns on top of guns on top of guns, control stations for everyone. The Terradrome was stacked with play value. Just like a stack of books. Don't sleep on stack of books, especially big, uniform books like a full set of encyclopedias. You can make buildings or walls. They're modular. You can rearrange them like big Lego bricks. Stack of books is where it's at. Number four is 1987 Kenner the Real Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters. What's fun about playing with a building? Lots of stuff. Look no further than the callouts on the box itself. First off, firehouse doors. And let me follow that up with a ghost pursuit fire pole. That's not enough. How about goop grates? Stand your figure underneath, pour ectoplasmic goop on them through the roof. And when you're done with all that, park your Ecto-1 inside, admire the OSHA-approved safety railings, and trap a ghost inside the ghost containment unit. Something for every ghost hunter or collector out there. I mean, uh, I mean, it's no tree, but it was pretty cool for 1987. Number three is 1985 Hasbro G.I. Joe USS Flag. One of the greatest, I mean, Forget playsets, one of the greatest things ever made as a toy, period. Check out our video reviewing this one to hear me wax poetically about what might have been if 1985 had gone just a little bit differently for me personally. Long story short, shout out to my younger brother who turns 33 this year. Seeing one in person is like seeing the Loch Ness Monster or Sasquatch. You've heard the stories, you've seen the pictures, but no matter how much you wanted to believe it was real, you couldn't until it was actually in front of you. You have to turn your head to see the whole thing. It's that big. It's off the potato sack chart. It has a working microphone, an elevator, missile launchers, and a steering wheel. Stairs, steps, ladders, bulkhead doors, so many places to stand action figures, it takes your breath away. And I was so close on this one. I wish I had gone with my first instinct. I, I was going to put USS Flag. Instead, I put, I put bathtub. So close. It's, it's close. The number two vote getter was 1985 Kenner Mask Boulder Hill, a phenomenal playset from top to bottom, loaded with detail and action features. What appears to be a nondescript gas station transforms into a fully operational battle station with pivoting gas pump freeze cannons, flip down holographic stun cannons hidden in the signage, armored pillbox with swiveling anti gravity howitzer, breakthrough bunker wall, a hidden trap door that deposits unsuspecting foes directly into the detention cell. And literally on top of that, an anti aircraft gun inside the mountaintop hidden under the boulder on the hill. One of the few placets on this list that came with a figure, Boulder Hill actually came with two figures. And, uh, and uh, I also said Boulder Hill. It's one of the few playsets I owned. I see you all out there. I know what's going on in the community. Nailed it. Finally, at number one, the playset that got the most votes was 1982 Mattel Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskull. Few playsets can compete with the stony visage of Castle Grayskull. A giant skull head with a door for a mouth, it was a mysterious contrast of expectations. 
convention would say that this should be the place where the bad guys camp out, but Masters of the Universe turned that idea around and made it the home of the good guys. Or at least it was the place where the greatest power in the universe was contained, and the good guys were tasked with keeping it out of the hands of the bad guys, kind of a neutral site type of thing. It belonged to whoever was in residence. It's rather small compared to the larger scale of the figures. Beyond the actual skull head design, which is the main factor behind this set's popularity, there are a few play features, including an elevator that leads to a computer on the second floor. There's a laser cannon, a flag, a weapons rack, and a training device. The strongest gimmick it had going for it was the throne that could be rotated to trigger a lever that released the trapdoor right next to the throne. That trapdoor led to a prison, which was just a sticker on the ground that anyone entering the castle would have seen on the way in. But you gotta suspend some disbelief with this stuff. Or, or you could get yourself some cardboard boxes. Cardboard boxes. Build a clubhouse. Build a fortress. Build a massive labyrinth that extends the length of the hallway. Windows. Trapdoors. Every single one of these awesome playsets came in cardboard boxes. Cardboard boxes has everything. Cardboard boxes is everything. It's a cave, it's a spaceship, make a prison cell, make a weapons rack. Cardboard boxes is cheap. The only limitation with cardboard boxes is your imagination. That's the 10 best action figure playsets, or 19 best. You've got to have some place to entertain your figures, to play out all those awesome scenarios, or at least to add some visual punch to your display. Now you know where to start if you want to go right to the top. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Share this video across the collecting community. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Producer Greg and I are always on Twitter. He's ToyGalaxyTV. I'm ToyGalaxyDan. I am. Let us know down in the comments below what your favorite place it is that didn't make the list. Wayne Manor, Ewok Village, Fortress of Fangs, the Entertainment Center in the Living Room. Cut.